Good morning and welcome back. It's Kirsten and it's the start of another weekly vlog which I think at this point is either this one or the next one which marks a year of doing weekly vlogs which it's been a lot of fun honestly. I was very nervous to start them but actually it's been just a great way to take you all on what I've been up to, what I've been reading and all the thoughts and stuff. Anyway, Let's get to what I'm reading currently. So at the moment I am reading three books. My audiobook is Vita Nostra by Sergei Dyshenko. I've probably pronounced that incorrectly, sorry. It is a translated book from Russian and this is really enjoyable. It is kind of like a fairy tale-esque book and I wouldn't have known anything about it but I was watching a top books video by Elias who I will have linked below and he was talking about it and saying how he really liked it that it's like this darker fairy tale feeling to this book so I was like okay well definitely going to give this a try and I found it on script so I thought that's perfect and it is kind of interesting I've only listened to the first couple of hours so I'm not that far into the book but we're following this main character and she's on holiday and then she meets this creepy man who is asking her to do things she doesn't want to do but if she doesn't do them there are severe consequences so she starts doing them and when she completes a task she starts throwing up these gold coins and it's so unusual but I'm now at the point where she's been completing these tasks for a good few months now and she gets approached by this man again and he says well done you've been doing really well now it's time for you to go to this school all of these tasks have been like your entrance exam to this school and it's a school for special technologies so I'm really intrigued as to where this is gonna go it's definitely got a slightly creepy feel to it not too much at the moment but I'm definitely intrigued and the fairy tale concept of these coins and everything is interesting so it's something I'm definitely enjoying listening to at the moment and yeah I haven't read a translated book so far this year so I'm very pleased to be listening to that as well. Physically I'm still reading Cushel's Dart by Jacqueline Carey this was what I was reading last week as well and it is a huge book it's over 900 pages long and I've just got to the halfway point which looks like it's over halfway but by page number count it's about halfway. This is quite a complex book and I did a terrible job of explaining it last week. As I'm reading it I'm finding it easier to explain because even though I've read this many many times as you can tell by the battered cover the last time I actually read this was about five six years ago and although I know the storyline and what happens there are so many more intricate things that I am going to forget over time. I mean, it's a 900 page book. I'm not going to remember everything. This is a book where the world building is just phenomenal. We are in this world, which I kind of see as an alternate history to our world because even the map looks like our world. So this is Alba, which is clearly England. And then I kind of see Terre d'Ange as France. My geography isn't amazing, so it's probably a little bit off, but that is kind of how I imagine everything in my head. And the religion is beautiful. Jacqueline Carey has put so much time into creating this religion where the premise of it is simply love as thou will. And I think it's beautiful, but we do also have clear connections to other religions that are mentioned in this book, which mirror our religions as well as Norse mythology which I think is brilliant and is the perfect religion for this warrior tribe that we hear about as well. So religion is a big part in this book but it's woven in really well and the first hundred pages or so you're kind of meeting our main character Feardry and she is letting us know about the religion, about how Terra Dionge works as a society because she's talking to you about it as she learns it because you follow her from a very young age. And eventually Feardry gets sold into this household of Delincey. He trains up Feardry to become a spy and uses her to get information that he wouldn't be able to get. At first it is a bit confusing because you're seeing Feardry as she's growing up. She doesn't know the whole story. She doesn't understand why Delancey needs all this information. She's just doing as she's told and she's enjoying life. And it's not until about the 300 page mark where things take a darker turn and you start realising the result of all that information that Feardry was getting and how it all goes together. How basically it's resulting 
been in this war between two different countries and we have a lot of talk about slavery as well in the latter part of this book and I'm at the point now where Feardry's managed to I don't I don't want to say spoilers and stuff but she's at a different point in the book now and yet the stakes are still really high and she's got all this really important information that she needs to give over to people but the list of people that she can trust is narrowing down and you're just seeing this fight for survival, for trying to protect her country and alongside it you have the religion, you have a bit of a love story, there is a lot going on and I think it's beautifully done and the character development in here is amazing because you see Feardry go from this self-involved person to someone that thinks more about others and the impact that she's having and stuff which I do like and even Feardry notes that change in behaviour so I think it's a good book, I'm really enjoying it so fingers crossed I'll get this finished this week and the third book that I am reading is Anna Kay by Jenny Lee. Now this was a Christmas gift from Christina at Christina Campbell Books so please check her out. She's a lovely person, I love all of her videos and she likes to read a variety of books. Last year it was mainly thrillers and now she's reading a mixture so every time she reads from one genre she then changes it up and she's always reading different books that I wouldn't necessarily pick up and then when I do pick them up I tend to enjoy them so very good channel please do check her out and this book is a book that honestly was on my TBR because it's beautiful I mean look at that gorgeous pink cover it is stunning but this is a retelling of Anna Karenna now I haven't actually read Anna Karenna but Christina says it's one of her favorites so I definitely need to be checking that out especially because I have this thing now where if I've read a retelling or a book inspired by the classic I also want to read the classic to see where the influences came from but what I do know is Anna Karenna is a massive classic book like it is huge but um I am going to get it and I will be reading it this year but because I haven't read that classic book I can't say how well this is a retelling like how well it's been done what I can say is for the first few pages that I have read which is only about 40-ish pages this is definitely more of a love story which I don't mind we're following four main characters and they are younger teenagers they're in this elite society where money is not a problem you know they can spend ridiculous amounts of money on nothing and their parents don't care because that's just their society that they're in at the moment and you're seeing the tangled up love lives which, you know what, it's just an easy piece of fun at the moment. I will say one thing that does kind of irritate me with this book is it uses shorthand. So if they're saying girlfriend, it's literally just written as GF in the book. And I'm just like, oh god, that's so irritating. Like, it, it's not a big deal, but it is kind of irritating. And I understand why, because it's written as a young adult book for younger readers and we are having it all from their perspectives and so they are using their shorthand that you would use in like text but I'm just like not in a book but that's just me being pernickety. Otherwise it's a fun read so far I don't have too many thoughts because I'm only 40 pages in but I'm interested enough to carry on with it and it's just a light read and I haven't actually read any romance books really the only romance I've ever really picked up is either fantasy romance which isn't many of them it's normally they've got a bigger plot line and then there's romance along the side of it or classics like Pride and Prejudice otherwise I don't really pick up romance. This is an interesting new step into a completely different genre that I haven't read from but I'm enjoying it and I'm here for the ride and that's it. <laughs> so as usual I need to get going to work as for the rest of the week. Honestly I don't have any plans, I've got no idea what's going to happen this week so I guess we will see. <laughs> Okay, gonna do a quick update on reading news and then I have a little mini book haul which I'm so excited about. So, I am reading Anna Kay and this is actually genuinely really fun. I'm just over halfway through and it's kind of like rich people drama is just what I'm getting from this book. So we're following four main characters, we're following their, literally just their lives, there's drugs and alcohol and sex and problems with relationships and it is pretty much just like some TV drama that's going on in this book but it's such an easy read and it makes me so intrigued as to see what Anna Karenna is actually about because if this is a retelling based off it how realistic is this retelling? 
Are we just taking the concept of Anna Karenina and putting it in a modern day setting? Because if so, that's a big chunky book for a lot of rich people drama. But either way, I'm really enjoying this. It's just so much fun. And although I did get a little bit irritated with the text speak here and there, you do get used to it quite quickly and it does just blend with the atmosphere and the vibe of this book. It's just so much fun. It is problems I am never going to experience in my life because I'm never gonna have that much money. But it is just so much fun and I'm really liking a lot of the characters. The Count is just one of my favorites at the moment. Anna Kay herself is just one of those characters where I'm really looking forward to seeing how she develops and how she actually does start doing the things that she wants to do because you see her at the start of being this very proper character with keeping herself to this level constantly, trying to be the perfect daughter, the perfect girlfriend, all of this, then you're starting to see her slowly change and wanting to embrace just what she wants for a change. And I really like that. So yeah, really enjoying this actually, a lot more than what I thought. It's just a fun light read, but I am focusing on this so much because I do want to do my April wrap up at the end of this week. I did want to do it today but I haven't finished this book and I do want this to be part of it so I'm just going to push it to bank holiday Monday because I'm off then so I'm just going to film it then. Because I've been focusing so much on this book I haven't read any more of Cashel's Dart but the reason being is because I can still put this as part of my wrap up because I know exactly what happens from this point. I know what star rating I'm going to give this because it is a reread so I thought out of the two it's more important to finish up Anna Kay and get that done, prioritise that, and then I can just finish up because she'll start when I'm ready, because I have read this before. And I am still enjoying this reread, it's not been put to one side because I'm not enjoying it at all. I do think though, where I've left it, honestly, she could have made the book a bit shorter and actually done book one as to where I've left it and then done book two to here rather than having such a chunky book. But at the same time, I don't mind it. And because I've left it in a good position, I know exactly where I'm going to go back to it. But I have to admit, it is quite nice to have a break from fantasy and go for something completely different and just lighter and a fun read. So very much enjoying that. I am still listening to Vita Nostra, but I do think that's just going to go into May's wrap up instead of April because I still have over 11 hours of the audiobook left. And it is interesting, but it's very repetitive at the minute. We're following our main character as she's at the school for special technologies and you're just kind of seeing her deal with the school there and her interactions with the other students, what the teachers kind of expect of you and how difficult it all is. But it is kind of repetitive. The last like two, three hours have been very repetitive. So I'm looking forward to see where it progresses. But I think in reality, in book terms, about two to three hours of me listening to it is about a hundred pages because I listen to it a lot slower than what I would physically read a book and I do love the concept so I'm really intrigued to see where it goes but at the moment it's just slowed down a little bit but I still like it, it's not a bad book. Now that's out of the way, let's get to this book haul. So I had some book vouchers from work and I was gonna be very much like a, I'm only gonna buy one book per week, make these vouchers last. Yeah, that lasted all of one week. That that's how long that lasted but we did try. So the books I ended up getting, two were from recommendations from the actual bookseller in Waterstones because I go to my local Waterstones so often they know me pretty well and they're always giving me recommendations and stuff so when I went to pay for the two other books he said oh no you have to give these a try so I was like eh why not? I've got a voucher, may as well. And those ended up being Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell, which I've been hearing a lot about and the booksellers just keep raving to me about. I think the last few times that I've actually been in Waterstones, they've recommended it every single time. And he turned around and said to me, are you ever just going to get this? And I was like, yeah, sure, why not? And I am excited for it. It seems really interesting. And I do believe it's based on Shakespeare's son and it's what inspired the play of Hamlet. I believe. I could have this completely wrong. What I do know is that it is beautifully written and I'm looking forward to it. I haven't read anything that's been inspired by Shakespeare before. I don't know, maybe that's wrong. But no, I genuinely don't think I have. No, don't think so. But yeah, I'm excited for this. I genuinely don't know anything about it apart from the fact that everyone's really talking about it and they love the writing style. So I'm here for that. I think it's more of like a historical fiction than anything else. And then because it was on buy one, get one half price, I also recommended The Dinner Guest by B.P. Water and they literally just said this is just a fun one where they all go to this meal 
and then I think something as simple as the lights go off and then they come back on and someone's dead and you've got to work out who did it and they just said it was a really fun time and it was a bit of an interesting one with a few twists and turns so I'm just like you know what why not it's not something I would normally pick up I'm not normally a mystery thriller reader I would normally pick these up from charity shops just because I don't always enjoy them apart from like YA murder mystery I'm happy to pick those up but adult ones I don't tend to read as much of I mean it was half price it was like £4.50 so I don't mind that those are the two books that I picked up just based on their recommendations but the actual books I wanted to get we have Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier and this is a classic book I've had my eye on for a while I really don't know much about it but I'm quite happy to go into books not knowing much about it I just know that it's meant to be a really influential piece of literature and I'm excited to give it a try I think I've been hearing kind of mixed things on this where it's a bit creepy but not too much and there's a bit of romance and stuff so I'm not sure what to expect from it but I do really want to give this a go so when I saw this copy and I really liked the edges with the nice green on it I thought why not I may as well give this a try so was happy to pick this one up and then I got a book that has made this book haul the best book haul because I am in love with it so so much it is a book I've read before and that is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte but the specifically the Penguin Classics Deluxe Edition which is just stunning I love it I'm loving the gothic art style on the cover it has decoration on the back also the inside flaps I mean it's just gorgeous I absolutely love it Jane Eyre is one of my favorite classic books anyway and I've been eyeing this up for a while and I just thought you know what sod it I actually really want this book so I got it and now I can't stop thinking about all the other books because they also have a version of this in Wuthering Heights Dracula and a few other classics and some of them have this gothic -y art style others have a completely different art style because they got different artists to design the covers and I just think they're amazing and classics one of those things where I can legit own several copies of the same book this now puts me at my third or fourth copy of Jane Eyre now but it's such a good story and it's one I will always reread and recommend if you want to try classics. I think it's a brilliant story. I'm really excited so I literally just went in to pick up two classic books because honestly as much as I am mainly a fantasy reader I will have to say that I'm really into classics at the moment and I'm just loving the way that they're written. I mean I've always had an appreciation for horror classics anyway because I love the fact that they have inspired so much of our popular culture now but I'm definitely getting more into actually reading a lot more classics and that is one of my goals for this year and at first I was a bit like hmm don't know if I'm going to enjoy that goal but actually I've been finding myself wanting just to leave my TBR behind and just pick up classic books and just read those so I'm definitely going to start putting more of them on my TBR my main TBR is up already and there's only one on there but I think going forward I definitely want to put more classic books on my TBRs just because I'm enjoying them so much and I have so many now and let's face it they're so beautiful you can choose between so many different editions of books I do think it's always worth trying at least a couple of classics even if you think they're not for you there's so many different genres within classic books that it's easy to find one and there's so many short stories as well that is a good way to sample their writing to see if it's for you and you can even get like the little mini pocketbook classics for like a pound so you're not even spending much money on them that's my tangent for today try classic books and if you have what's your favorite so I can start checking that out okay I need to carry on with this day I've got a busy day meeting my sister and stuff which I think Thursdays are just turning into that which I'm not mad about it's quite nice but yeah I'm gonna stop rambling I'm gonna get going and I will catch up with you soon and I have actually finished Anna K and this came out as three stars 
A really enjoyable three star though and definitely something I would reread. Yes, it does have a lot of trigger warnings for cheating, sex and drugs and just so much of that but I saw this more as a rich people drama book so I kind of expected it and I didn't mind it. The only reason why it's getting that three star mark instead of four is because of the writing. I was just not a fan of, as I've said, the shorthand in it. It just really frustrated me and also certain parts of this book I do feel could have been explored a bit further in terms of emotions and stuff because there was a lot of like insta love going on which isn't my favourite but I did enjoy this. Again, I can't say how well it is a retelling of Anna Karenna because I haven't actually read that book. And I will say if you want to read Anna Karenna and you haven't, don't read this one first because it does give away the ending of Anna Karenna and I did not know the ending and that's going to be really upsetting. And it's kind of like the big plot spoiler at the end of that book so I feel like when I do finally read Anna Karenna I might not be as emotionally impacted but we will have to see. It was a sad ending to this book but I also feel like it could have been so much more emotional if we had taken a bit more time with our characters and gotten to see them emotionally developed. Instead it was kind of like a sudden event that happened with not much time to process it so it was sad but I can't say I was emotionally impacted a lot by it. I did really enjoy this, I, it's a fun read that I know I will go back to especially when I'm not sure what I want to read and I or I need a contemporary prompt or something like that, this is one I would happily go back to. So thank you very much Christina for gifting me this. I have read some more of Vita Nostra which I am enjoying it has picked up again which I'm very pleased with. The last hour or so that I've just read has been very interesting, it's getting really creepy and I just have no idea what this score is wanting from Sasha. It's really ugh, just, just creepy, very creepy. I'm loving the atmosphere to it. I'm not sure if this is a book I would physically get only because it is such a slow paced book. I love the concept, I'm loving the fairy tale like vibes to it, but I will say the slowness in some parts of it is just a little bit too slow. So I think it just kind of hinges on this last half of the book and I could not tell you what star rating this book is going to come out at. I don't even have a guess because some parts of it are phenomenal other parts of it are really slow and boring so I just don't know but it is an interesting one. I am trying to read more translated works and yeah I, I do love it but I also find it a bit slow in places so we'll see. I also haven't read any more of Cashel's Dart because I was focusing so much on Anna Kay but hopefully across this weekend I will just get it finished up and then Monday start fresh with my May TBR. That's the plan. Whether it works like that or not, I have zero idea. And of course, it wouldn't be this weekly vlog update without a book haul because that's what it's turning into. And on Thursday, before I met up with my sister and that, I did a bit of charity book shopping, which I love doing. And where I live, there's like five or six different charity shops. Now, they don't always have a lot of books and stuff, but I did manage to find two good finds. One of them is The Starless Sea by Erin Morganston. This is a book that I've been wanting to get for a while. Well, I say a while, since the beginning of April, just because of how much I loved The Night Circus. That was a book I kept putting off because I didn't think I'd enjoy it and it ended up being five stars. I loved it so, so much, to the point where I definitely wanted to get The Starless Sea. Also, this cover is gorgeous. I absolutely love it and I was very willing to pay full price for it, but when I saw it in a charity shop for £2, I just thought this is perfect. Also, because I am part of a group read on Instagram for this in May, which is starting May the 13th, and we're all going to be giving this one a try. So I'm super excited that I found it for £2 and that I get to do a group read for it. So I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And then I also managed to get Dante's Inferno for £2. Dante's Inferno is probably the only poetry that I'll ever own because poetry is not my forte, it's not something I enjoy, but this is referenced in so many things and I have been wanting to read this for so long but always been put off by the fact that it is poetry but I am now going to give this a go and when I saw this rather garish cover in the charity shop I was like you know what? I have to just give this a try so 
that is what I'm going to be doing. I am really looking forward to reading it and I just think it's going to be a really interesting look into where we have grown as a culture from this because as I said it's just referenced in so many places and that's why I like classics so much is because of how it's influenced our pop culture today and continues to do so which I think is amazing that they can stand the test of time like that so I do think this is going to be really good let me know if you've read it actually it'll be interesting to see how many of you have read this but that is it <laughs> although because I got another two books it does mean I need to rearrange these shelves again as you saw I had to rearrange my shelves just to fit in a couple of books Ugh, I don't know because I've got bank holiday Monday so I've off two days I may just spend a bit of time on Monday reorganizing my shelves but that's going to be a massive task <sighs> it's just it's gonna take so long <laughs> anyway that's enough of rambling i do need to get going to work my plan for reading is just to get kishel's dart finished over the next couple days which i think i can do i mean maybe i've got like 450 pages left so we'll see maybe i can't do it i don't know i don't know i'm gonna go i don't even know what i'm saying anymore So I did finish Cashel's Dart and of course this was five stars. I really did enjoy it and although it is a long story, I do think there's some really like poignant moments, especially towards the end of the book and even the battle scenes and that they're depicted very well. And the way it carries on, you can leave it as just this one book if you wanted to or you can carry on and solve the riddle that Feardry has found. I will be carrying on because I have the other two books in the trilogy but not quite yet. I like to take a little bit of a break because they are such chunky books and the politics in that can be a little bit confusing. But I suppose you could see this almost like Game of Thrones but just from the perspective of one person instead of multiple characters. And once again I have a little bit of a haul to do. I had some online book vouchers left so I officially have no book vouchers left now but I don't know I just really wanted to get some new books this week and and that is what I did. One of the books I got is Watch Her Fall by Erin Kelly. Now I saw this in Waterstones near my partner's work and I was just so intrigued by the cover as well as these sprayed edges. Look how beautiful this is. It's absolutely amazing. And then I started reading into it and I was really intrigued but I didn't pick it up straight away. The longer I waited the more I kept thinking about it and honestly this just reminds me of the film Black Swan because we are following our main character who becomes the main lead for Swan Lake but there are lots of people who are not happy with this and you're seeing them kind of want to bring her down want to watch her fall. It seems like a really dark atmosphere book. I d haven't heard much about it to be honest before I saw it in the shop I hadn't seen it anywhere but I'm just really interested and I'm hopefully going to be doing a buddy read with Christina from Christina Camp Books with this book because I don't know it just seems like it's going to be a really creepy almost like psychological thriller read which is what I'm hoping for but we'll see what happens. And then also outside of my genre I have picked up The Tenant of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte. Now, as I've said throughout this vlog, I do want to read more classics and I haven't read anything by Anne Bronte. And this one is one of her darker books. We're following our main character who is escaping from her abusive husband with her child. And apparently it's really quite intense in places because when you first meet the husband and that, he doesn't seem like a horrible person. He seems very charming. And then you later realize how cruel he can be. I've had mixed reviews on this one but the result in is that it is a dark read and it can be a bit difficult in places. Genuinely I tend to find that darker literature, gothic literature is definitely what I prefer so I'm hoping that I will still enjoy this one plus I really loved this edition of it. But that's it. I hope you've all had a lovely week. Let me know what have you been up to and I'm gonna go. So if you have enjoyed this video don't forget to give it that thumbs up and subscribe. My social media links will be linked below as well as everyone that I've mentioned and of course I will catch you in the next one. Mm.